Hey everyone, it's Derek. It is July 20th, 2015, and this is the first episode in our new ongoing series about climate change. Now, at the outset, I have to confess, uh, the video I had planned to do for you today was just going to be about a report that came out last week called State of the Climate 2014. Um, and we're going to tell you all about it. Um, but as I was finishing editing that video, a new report came out that said that the first six months of this year is the warmest such period ever. So uh, I'm getting scooped again <laughs> by the news. So I figured what we're going to do instead is uh, I'll tell you a little bit about the report, the State of the Climate 2014 report, and then I will come back and give you the details about uh, the report on the first six months of this year. So, 2014 was the Earth's warmest full year on record. That's according to a new international report published last week. Uh, again, the state of the climate in 2014. Um, it was compiled by National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, and it confirms that land and sea temperature, sea levels, and greenhouse gases all set new records in 2014. And the temperature record is confirmed by four independent data sets so it's very solid that yes 2014 the hottest year on record um, but that is just kind of the top line of the report um, there are some other details that I think are really important for example greenhouse gases uh, carbon dioxide uh, methane and nitrous oxide all hit record levels in 2014 and they all are greenhouse gases again atmospheric carbon dioxide increased by 1.9 parts per million in 2014 and that brought it up to a global average of 397.2 parts per million. So why am I throwing all these numbers at you? Well, um, the science shows that for us to maintain a safe temperature for the climate for which our civilization is adapted, we have to get that number down to 350 parts per million. So we need to be at 350. We're at 397.2. It's not looking great right now. Ocean temperatures also hit record highs for this year, and that's important because the oceans are a major heat sink, and they absorb about 90% of the excess heat generated um, through human-caused climate change. And so when the oceans heat up, you get bad effects like above-average numbers of tropical cyclones. So there were 91 tropical cyclones in 2014, and that is well above the 20-year average of 82 storms. So again, 91 versus 82. The Arctic continued to warm, Sea ice remained at low levels, with snow melt starting almost a full month ahead of schedule this year. And the thing that really stood out to me in this report, though, is that there are five permafrost observatories on the north slope of Alaska, and at the 20 meter depth, four of the five recorded record temperatures. And again, if you're following the science on this, you know that if the permafrost melts in the Arctic, it could release a catastrophic amount of methane that's currently locked away in the permafrost that could lead to runaway temperature rise in a very short period of time, so that's really concerning to me. During the summer when the Arctic sea ice melts, um, the, the edges of the polar ice cap contract back towards the pole, and this year we saw the sixth lowest extent of that sea ice. It shrank to its sixth lowest level since we began taking observations back in 79. Um, of the eight lowest levels, all eight happened in the last eight years. So this is a very scary time for the polar ice cap. Uh, the polar ice cap actually is a major factor in shielding us from runaway global warming. Um, it reflects sunlight off, whereas open ocean water, it's darker colored, so it absorbs more of the light and more of the heat. Now, one of the things you are sure to hear about from this report is the fact that while the Arctic ice cap was receding towards the pole, in Antarctica, the sea ice was actually growing and we hit a maximum record high for the sea ice extent this year. And they're absolutely right. We did hit a, a new record for the extent of sea ice in Antarctica. However, that doesn't mean that the oceans aren't warming near Antarctica. It doesn't mean that global warming is not happening. Actually, Antarctica has been losing land ice at an accelerating rate. And land ice is the important ice when it comes to sea level rise. Antarctic sea ice is growing despite a strongly warming southern ocean and possibly as a consequence of losing that land ice. So the southern ocean has been warming faster than the rest of the world's oceans. Globally from 1955 to 1995, the world's oceans have been warming at 0.1 degree Celsius per decade. But the southern ocean has been warming at 0.17 degrees Celsius per decade, almost double that rate. Uh, not only is the southern ocean warming, it's warming faster than the global trend. 
and the melting land ice and the increased precipitation due to the warming ocean, that decreases the salinity of the water at the surface, making it easier to freeze. And as the winds from the continent push the other ice away, this newly opened water then refreezes. So that's why the sea ice is expanding. Overall, that report paints a pretty dire picture of the state of the changing climate. But here's the punchline, as I mentioned at the top. Right as I was finishing editing the original version of this video, a new report came out on climate.gov showing that 2015 is going to smash 2014's records. The first six months of this year is the hottest such period on record. So when you go back and look at, the, at all the records for the first six months of the year, this is the hottest we've ever seen. So it looks like 2015 is actually going to smash 2014's records. So if we we're going to act on climate, we've got to act fast. So thank you for watching. Please share this video with your friends and please become a subscriber. Just click on the subscribe button under this video um, and become a subscriber for this channel so you can stay plugged in to the latest science on climate change and we can give you a heads up when there are impactful actions that you can take to fight global warming and the people that are profiting from it. Thanks.